This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 25 of season 3 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, June 18th, 1910, and I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford that week. The week starts with the Westford Center section. The young colored man who was formerly a student and a graduate at Tuskegee, who spoke at the Unitarian Church last Sunday morning, was present at the Congregational Church in the evening. The very rainy evening made a difference with the attendance, but those who were present were much interested. The speaker presented the work and aims of Tuskegee Institute and its well-known founder, Booker Washington, and the means of uplift and enlightenment he had been to many of the colored race. The speaker was desirous of securing two scholarships at $50 each in Westford. This amount at Tuskegee, which is an industrial school, will carry a student through the four years course. Word has been received by the Westford Friends of the death on June 11th of Dr. E. M. White of Gorham, New Hampshire. Dr. White, W-I-G-H-T, was Mrs. Charles P. Marshall's father and will be pleasantly remembered as a visitor at the parsonage during Mr. Marshall's pastorate. Uh, He was here at the Congregational Church from 1905 to 1910. Dr. White had been a general practitioner for many years and was a fine type of the New England country doctor. Death was due to a general breakdown incident to advanced years. Uh, His advanced years were 75. He was only 75 years old. An improvement has been made in front of the post office. The space in front of the sidewalk where the RFD carriers, teams, and many other vehicles that gather in front of a post office and general store has been nicely filled in and paved with stones which will greatly improve conditions in wet and stormy weather. Captain uh, Sher- Sherman H. Fletcher was the postmaster in 1910, so 1910. So the post office was at the Wright and Fletcher store on Main Street, which is now uh, Muffins on Main. And I believe there's actually a picture in there that shows uh, one or two of the RFD uh, drivers with their uh, wagons uh, parked in front of the uh, post office or the store. Flag Day, June 14th, was quite generally observed in our village. Flags were in evidence on all the public buildings and on many private residences. The engagement is now is announced of Miss Annie Blodgett of Groton and Aaron Tuttle of this village. A little son was born to Mr. and Mrs. Henry Bainot on Saturday, June 11th. The little little newcomer's name is Everett Bainot. That's spelled B-E-N-E-A-U-L-T. The ladies' missionary meeting of the Congregational Church met with the president, Miss Sarah Loker, at her home at Providence Farm Wednesday afternoon. This meeting with the president has come to be an annual event in the pleasantest season of the year. There was a good attendance, and it was very largely an outdoor affair. It was a sewing meeting, and the special thanks offering envelopes were opened. Dainty refreshments were served by the hostess, Miss Loker, and Miss Priscilla Bunce, her niece. Miss Packard, head of the mathematics department at LaSalle Seminary, is giving her niece, Lillian Draper, a trip to Europe this summer. They sail with friends from New York on June 29th for Naples, visiting Italy, Switzerland, the Passion Play, uh, presumably the one in Oberammergau, Bavaria, Germany, Paris, London, etc., sailing home from Glasgow, Scotland, on August 29th. Miss Draper has just finished her freshman year at Wellesley College. The new park is the next section. Work in the new Whitney Park and playground progressed steadily. So so much work, which might be called thoroughly preliminary, has been necessary that it will be some weeks yet before anything like finishing touches will come. 
The townspeople have been much interested in the progress of the work and easily recognize the effort necessary to convert especially some parts of the five acres into smooth land. Much draining, blasting, and burying rocks, cutting of trees, and taking out tree roots has been accomplished. This, of course, is the Whitney Park between the Frost School and the Rodenbush Community Center now. The baseball diamond at the rear is finished and is a fine affair, and some good games are to, t to take place this season. The outlines of the tennis court and considerable preparatory work has been done, and this is near the Academy Building, which is now the Rodenbush Center. In the southern corner, a grove of trees is to be left, and loads upon loads of filling are being used to level up this place. In the end, these trees will surely be well rooted. One of the many desirable results of the park will be the appropriate surroundings for the pretty Frost School building. On the land nearest the Spalding estate, four plots of ground have been graded and laid out, each one for the pupils of the four rooms to cultivate and make beautiful with flowers. The next section is called the Grange. The observance of the 15th anniversary of Westford Grange, postponed from the real date of its organization in March on account of the town hall being closed for a number of weeks for repairs, took place at the town hall on Thursday evening of last week. It was a successful and memorable event in Grange Annals and a credit to the committees in charge. The supper took place the first part of the evening, and previous to this, the members and invited guests gathered in the upper hall, and a pleasant reunion and reception was held. At the appointed time, the march was formed to the lower hall, and fully 250 sat down to the pretty tables and did am ample justice to a menu of salads, cold meats, rolls, coffee, ice cream, and cake. At the close of the supper, adjournment was made to the upper hall, and the exercises of the evening took place. Worthy Master Frank C. Wright called to order and presided, welcoming all in fitting words. After music by the Grange Orchestra, State Master Charles M. Gardner of Westfield and a member of the state legislature was called upon. Mr. Gardner is an especial favorite with the Westford patrons, and whatever subject he chooses to talk upon is sure to be worthwhile and of interest. His greetings on Thursday evening were full of sincerity, in which he congratulated our Grange and its growth and progress from its beginning with 42 charter members up to the present with a membership of about 200. He would not have his hearers believe that the best things were accomplished and over, but like St. Paul of old, quote, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before. That's a quote from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. He prophesied in his own optimistic way, all good for the future. He also brought reports of practical results in legislation of a special interest to patrons, particularly to milk producers. State lecturer E. F. Richardson followed with interesting remarks, particularly of Grange progress throughout the state. Mrs. F. C. Wright, gave an outline of our Grange happenings since its organization, which was in verse and much enjoyed. Mrs. Josie A. Prescott also contributed reminiscences. There was more music by the orchestra and a duet by John S. Grieg and Edmund G. Boynton, after which the master called upon the guests of the evening, mostly masters of other Granges, to speak, and their messages, while all different, were all pleasant with greetings and congratulations. Next section is the About Town section. Phineas Parker Fletcher was in town this week, calling on old-timers of his time. Forty years ago, he was a resident of Westford, living on the George H. Fletcher place on the Concord Road. He claims everything in town that has a Fletcher to it, from Oak Hill to Neshoba. As an infant, he started in business in Groton. He is now 85 years from first seen. The alumni of the Westford Academy, that old, ancient, and honorable, are bound to keep young. The annual reunion dance jubilee combination will be held Friday evening, June 24th, at the town hall. 
Come and see age and youth and this ancient academy renew itself, lured on by fond recollections and the Salem Cadet Band. There will be a meeting of Troop F Cavalry Association at the Association Building on the Boston Road this Saturday afternoon, June 18th. They met in what is now the home at 20 Boston Road, which was previously a school, I believe. The Honorable Herbert E. Fletcher, constructing a new office and temporary residence as a partial convenience for family home until the real and permanent is evolved. H.W. Tarbell of Lowell has been called on, on the situation, and Oak Hill is apparently planning to retain its old-time hospitality with good modern deviations in arriving at it. You may recall that Mr. Fletcher's house had recently burned to the ground. The Eben Prescott family on Francis Hill were the first in town market with strawberries. The tree warden is fortifying the trees against attacks of gypsy moths. The burlap used is probably a part of the Daniel H. Sheehan 1,500,000 order from the state, which he received some time ago. Daniel Sheehan had the mill, kind of a combination mill, on Lowell Road, kind of opposite where the Pelatia Fletcher House is located. The next section is the Forge Village section. William Orange, who, who enlisted in the Colonel and the Company I, 11th Infantry, stationed at Fort D.A. Russell, Wyoming, has served his time three years and is now visiting his relatives here. He was a victim of yellow fever and was confined to the hospital several weeks. He was appointed postmaster of his company, also bugler, and is seriously thinking of re-enlisting again for three years. This is his first visit since he left home in 1907 and finds many familiar faces absent. Among, among them are his father, brother, and grandmother, who were enjoying the best of health and were present to wish him goodbye on his long journey across the country, they having since answered the final summons. A number of people from here attended the parish meeting of the vicarage in Ayer on Tuesday evening for the purpose of appointing a clergyman to fill the vacancy caused by the resignation of Reverend Thomas L. Fisher. It was decided not to appoint a permanent vicar during the summer months. Clergymen from other parishes will in turn occupy the pulpit at St. Andrew's Mission. Services next Sunday will be at 4.30 p.m. E. H. Hilliard will have charge. Mr. Hilliard, who was superintendent of the Sunday school here, will start on a European trip next week. The Tigers will play the Westford Scouts on Cameron Grove Saturday. That's a baseball game. A very pleasant reunion of Keithley people from Mary, spelled M-E-R-R-I-E, England was held Saturday evening at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Finn on Pond Street. About 30 people were present, all of whom were neighbors in Keithley, England. The evening was pleasantly spent in talking over old times. Songs were given by Miss Sadie Smith, Miss Mary Gardner, John Young, and Bernard McCann. Character songs by John Gallagher, recitations Charles Flanagan, Patrick Brophy. Among the out-of-town guests were James Gallagher and John Young of New Jersey, formerly of the well-known Keith, Keith Lee football team, Bernard McCann of Lowell, Patrick Brophy of Lawrence. I keep a, a Westford genealogy file of old, uh, older Westford families, and that file shows over 160 residents of Westford who were born in Keith Lee, Yorkshire, England. Among the more common names are Delaney, Emmett, with an O-E-M-M-O-T-T, -T, Finn, Heron, Holmes, Kavanaugh, Lavelle, May, McNiff, Malloy, Smith, and, Wal and Walsh. Uh, Keithley, by the way, is spelled K-E-I-G-H-L-E-Y, but it's pronounced Keithley. The Forge Village Lions will play the Pawtucket Blues in the Stony Brook League on Saturday afternoon on the home grounds. Miss Let Letitia Ward, 
principal of the Cameron School, entertained the pupils of the 6th, 7th, and 8th grades at her home on last Saturday evening. The most important event was the dainty supper, which was served soon after their arrival. The table was tastefully arranged with many cut flowers and candies, and no time was lost in disposing of the many good things. The evening was pleasantly spent in music and song. William Davis contributed selections on the violin. Miss Abby M. Blaisdell, teacher of the second and third grades, held a picnic with her pupils on Wednesday. The children with their lunch baskets met Miss Blaisdell at, nine, at the 945 electric and started immediately for the picnic grounds. Mrs. Bert Comey kindly gave the use of her premises, which is an ideal spot to hold an outing, and also furnished the ice cream. Miss Blaisdell contributed lemonade, fruit, and fancy biscuits, and the weatherman did his share by f furnishing a rare day in June. The children spent the day in playing games and roaming through the woods. The children are indebted to their teacher and Mrs. Comey for a very pleasant outing. The school closed last Friday for the summer vacation of three months. All of the grammar school people's pupils received marks of perfect attendance. Mrs. Grace Lawrence has returned from a pleasant trip with her cousin, Miss Olive Prescott of Reading. A very enjoyable concert was given in Abbott Hall Wednesday evening by Thomas Long of Lowell, a former resident who is well known as a writer. Among the numbers given was one of his own composition, The Boys of Uncle Sam. The music was written by A. Martell of Lowell, a well-known teacher of the piano. This number was generously applauded. Opening number was a piano solo by A. Martell, duet Osmond Long and Harry Mendel Men and Harry Needham, song The Boys of Uncle Sam by Thomas Long, Japanese drill and song by the following young ladies, Ada Long, Sadie Ingham, Eva M. Hutton, Gladys Long, Dorothy Jordan, arranged by Miss Annie Long and Miss Nita Jordan, playing the accompaniment. General dancing followed. Amy Boucher received a telegram, a telegram from Canada Tuesday announcing the critical illness of his father, Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher left immediately for the home of his parents. Graniteville is the next section. Reverend M. E. Doherty, the new curate recently assigned as assistant to the pastor, Reverend Edmund T. Schofield, celebrated his first mass in St. Catherine's Church on Sunday morning and in his introductory sermon made a very good impression on the large congregation present. It appears to be the pre prevailing opinion that Father Doherty will be very well liked by the parishioners of St. Catherine's Church as time goes on. After the Mass, Father Doherty addressed the members of the Holy Name Society, congratulating them on their good work and promising to aid them in every way he could in the future. The members were very much pleased with his brief remarks and will look forward to those meetings with renewed interest. In spite of the inclement weather, the Children's Day services that were held at the Emmy Church Sunday morning were largely attended and a very interesting program carried out. All the children did finely in their respective parts, which reflects great credit on the committee in charge. The children took part in the program with recitation or song were Myrtle Healy, Bertha Stanley, Jenny Blanchard, Nettie Hanning, Earl Robinson, Walter Stewart, Victor Doucette, Walter Blanchard, Charlie Robinson, Walter Robinson, Walter Beebe, Alice Gilson, Albert Blanchard, Martha Lorman, and Madeline Holland. Owing to the rainy weather of last Saturday, the Graniteville Baseball Club did not visit North Chelmsford as intended. Mrs. J. A. Healy, James Edward, and Arthur Healy have returned home after spending a few days at Marlborough as guests of Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Sullivan. Miss Laura E. Healy of Lowell, formerly of this village, has accepted a position in Sugar Hill, New Hampshire, and left last week to commence her new duties. There was a meeting of Cameron Circle held in Healy's Hall on Tuesday evening. Business of importance was transacted, 
transacted, and Miss Mary Sullivan and Mrs. Julia Wall read a report of the Grand Convention that was held in Boston last week, which they attended as delegates. That's the news in Westford for the week ending June 18th, 1910. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.